Hi, I'm Heidi Deal, author of the novel Lifelines, and we're going to talk today about structure. So this exercise gets at the idea that a story will be much more interesting if it's about more than just one thing. Of course, we need the story's events, its plot, but ideally we're also going to have some kind of emotional movement, some ineffable feeling that when a story is really working, we get to by its end. This is easier said than done. You can't force this kind of resonance, can't impose meaning onto the process of writing, a process that is so much about discovery in the moment, about grappling with the unknown. But certain things can help us get there. Paradoxically, imposing a rigid structure on a burgeoning story can be liberating, it can be generative. Constraints can actually be freeing it's the blank page with its endless possibilities that is actually the dead end, the non-starter. Applying particular limitations and rules to our work can offer not only a way to move forward, but it can actually free our minds to go to unexpected places, find new language and images that we wouldn't have found otherwise and that we definitely wouldn't have found just sitting there staring at the blank page. So this exercise is in the spirit of Lupo. That was a group of French writers and mathematicians who got together to impose rigid formulas and structures onto the wild, open-ended practice of writing. Lupo is an acronym in French that translates to Workshop of Potential Literature. So the Lipo people would do a snowball poem, that's a seven word sentence where each word gets incrementally longer. The first word is one letter, second word two letters, and so on up until seven. The point here is that your snowball sentence is going to look quite different than just any old sentence if you've sat down and wrote any sentence with no limitations at all. The point is to get to surprises, to get our minds to work in new and unexpected ways. Their results may be a little bit absurd, but when you're feeling stuck, when you're really grappling and trying to find your material, a little absurdity can be really pretty fruitful. So if you want, if you're feeling stuck with something you're writing, you could try a new lipo inspired exercise. So if you're trying to write a scene, it's really challenging, you just don't know what to do with it, try writing that scene only in very short sentences. Every sentence is going to be four words or shorter, or try writing it only in very long sentences. Let's say 30 words is your minimum. See if that takes you somewhere new. So for this exercise, you're going to borrow the form of something else, something that's not a story. You could use a grocery list, an advice column, a parking ticket, or something else that you choose. You can look at two published works that use this technique to great effect as inspiration. Tatiana Tolstoy's story Aspic, originally published in The New Yorker, loosely follows the form of a recipe. A character shops for and prepares Aspic. One could read this story and probably prepare the dish quite well. But something else is happening in the story as well. The character comes to some subtle but profound emotional realizations that familiar structure of the recipe, the sense of expectation and outcome just naturally built into the form, allows for the other story, the story of this character and their experience to be subtle, emotional, nuanced, and yet still powerful. And the details of the recipe itself offer rich figurative language and images that work to heighten meaning. Alejandro Zambra has a story collection that takes this idea a step farther. 
there's the book. So it's multiple choice and it's written as it sounds like in the form of a multiple choice test. Reading these stories and trying out the different options on the page as though you're taking the test helps us as readers to think about the choices on the part of a writer, the way that sentences impact meaning and tone. These stories are about the possibilities of revision, that kind of rewriting that we definitely do on the page and that our characters also do in their lives. Maybe it's that kind of most personal storytelling, that ordering of things, that making sense, that echoes the ineffable layered quality at the heart of a resonant story. So for this exercise, you'll need to think of a tense situation involving two or three characters. You'll write a very short story about that situation using your borrowed structure. So the parking ticket or the advice column, whatever you picked, that's gonna be your framework. With that clear and expected formula, that framework on the front of your mind, see what the back of your mind does with these characters, maybe even unconsciously. See what the details of that borrowed structure offer you. As the borrowed form resolves itself, probably in more familiar ways, see if the story on the level of character might resolve itself in less familiar ways, might go somewhere different. Try it and see where you wind up.